hello beautiful people another saturday evening beautiful saturday evening even though it's very hot <laughs> in this part of the world uh glad to be back on another parenting essentials as you join me just say hello and hi let me know you are there as you join me say hello hi let me know you are there so that we don't wait we don't waste much time let's eat the nail on the head and let's call it today sister bella i cite you there thank you for joining sister bella god bless you who else is there just say hello let me let me know where you're joining me from thank you for joining thank you for joining parenting essentials this is from the vision guide. Thank you for so much for joining. Last week I spoke about uh, my parent, my confident. How to be your teenager's confident. So today I will still be talking about teenager. Maybe next week also I'm not very sure about that. If there is need. I'll still be talking about teenager. So today, I'll be talking about how to identify a teenager who is not ready to listen. How to identify a teenager or your child who is not ready to listen. You know, when, we just, when I say teenager, that does not mean it's not applicable to children. So even, it's even better if your children are still much younger for you to look out for these things early enough so that you can identify them and deal with it appropriately. You don't need to wait until your child is as, uh, as grown as is now a teenager and you're struggling with these things. If we as parents are very, very sensitive enough, maybe these things will not happen, most probably. So now today I'm talking about how to identify a teenager who is not listening. Joy Ban Kai Solo. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. God bless you. God bless you. So, let's get started. And I hope we don't have any question from last week as I start today's topic that says how to identify a teenager who is not ready to listen. One of the things that is most common with teenagers that are not ready to follow instructions or to listen to you as a parent or guardian or caregiver is they look away they look away sister tony i cite you there thank you for joining god bless you my sister one of the thing that is one of the one of the things that is so common with teenagers who are not ready to listen is they look away if you're talking to them for example for example let me just speak a name timothy or something like that timothy uh, where were you after school hour today? Instead of them responding back to you, they just look away. Like just ignore as if you're not saying anything. They ignore as if uh, nobody, you are not existing. So these are things to look out for. These are things to look out for. They look away. I'm going to be fast today because I think I have quite a lot of things to talk about. And I want us to see you 30 minutes. So I'll just go ahead, note it down, please. They look away. They are not interested in whatever you're saying. Neither the question or the person that is talking. They just ignore quietly without saying any word. They just look away. The second thing that is common with teenagers that are not ready to listen today, if you're just joining me, I'm talking about how to identify teenagers or children who are not ready to listen. They are not even willing to follow instructions. They are not ready to listen. Because if we don't know, because sometimes I've seen parents asking me, is my child just strong will or not ready to listen? Is it just uh, having the mind of it or our own or the child is not ready to listen? We have to actually understand these things. They are so closely knitted. It's just a thin line between them. It's good to be strong will because there are advantages to that. It means when your child is outside the home, 
you can be rest assured that your child will not be easily influenced. However, you have to ensure that your child is not disobeying you. You have to be sensitive to these things. Of course, they are allowed to ask you why or, okay, I'll be going there later. Let me just leave that for now. Number one, they look away. Second thing for you to know that a child is not listening or following instruction or want to follow instruction is they don't answer back. They don't answer back. And it's part of looking away. They look away. Another thing to do is they look away and yet they don't answer back. They don't say a word. Some of them, they will look away, but they will murmur. They will say something. Oh, no, no, no. Mommy, just leave me alone. And some of them, they will look away, but they will say nothing. Another thing you have to look out for, and some of them will look away and smile. So that you, don't, you will not even have reason to pick offense. They will do it in a way that you don't even see that what you're doing is wrong. So it takes extremely sensitivity, extreme sensitivity for you to know that I need to help my child. He or she is going the wrong way. You are talking to your child, you ask a question or you give an instruction, your child is looking away and just smiling. So you, you feel like, oh, my child, at least she's not arguing. He's not arguing. So we have, we have to be extra smart because these children of, <laughs> the children of this generation are super smart. So we have to be on our toes to catch up with them. Sometimes, number three point, the third point is sometimes they start to do something else. Where were you after school hour? Did you do the dishes? They would just go ahead and do something else. They would just stand up and do something else. Immediately, maybe go to the computer and type or something. Or do what you even like, but not answering your question. Imagine you asking your child that where were you after school hours? Why didn't you clean your room? And immediately the child is going to stand up and pick the Bible and start reading. It takes you to be very smart to be upset. However, my child is just, you know, she wants to read. I don't, at that moment, if you're not sensitive, you know, you say, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to disturb my child. He or she wants to read, or he is in the spirit, or she is in the spirit. We have to be extra vigilant, extra smart. For us to be able to identify that you, this child is not ready to follow instruction, but they're just playing smart. They do something else immediately. And many a times, what they are going to do, it's what is going to cut your attention, what is going to make you happy. So they are running away from your question. They are running away from their responsibility. They don't want to be accountable. Yet... They know exactly which button to press. They know exactly which button to press. So we have to be very, very vigilant to this. We have to be very, very, uh, pay attention to details. So what can we do when a child is not ready to listen? What can we do when a teenager is not ready to listen? What are the things we can do? How can we go about it? Okay, now we know a few things that, okay, these things means the child is not ready to listen. That one means the child is not ready to listen. But what can we do as parent caregiver? What can we do? I wrote something. I said, children need to be taught the skill they need for communicating effectively. So that they don't choose not to listen to you. I'll say that again. They need to be taught the, the skills for communicating effectively so that they don't choose not to listen to you. I hope I'm communicating with somebody here. The ability to listen and follow instruction is a skill. And these skills to children, they need to be taught. Don't forget, we have said this severally, that children are raw materials. They are blank. They are blank slates. Her duty as parent caregiver is to write whatsoever we want on that slate. Our job is to write it down. Yes, Mr. Sis. Our job is to write it down. So communicating is a skill that we need to teach our children 
so that they don't choose not to listen to us. So it means, as a parent, if you don't teach your children this skill, they might choose not to listen to you. Do you now mean that the children are now the victim? Do you now get the point? They now become the victim. Meanwhile, you think that you are the victim. Because we might not even know. If you, even if you, for you as a parent, if you are not aware that I need to teach my children how to communicate, how to follow instructions, how to talk back, and you can see that the, your children are doing exactly what you don't want. Meanwhile, you have not, you have not done your bad part by teaching the child. The child has become the victim. That's not where I'm going to today. Children need to be taught the skill they need for communicating effectively so that they don't choose not to listen to you. How can we teach our children this communicating skills? Number one, you have to have the habit of looking eyeball to eyeball anytime communication occurs. I'm not talking about when the child is not listening at this moment. Anytime you're communicating with your child, it is very important for you to ensure that you have eye contact. If you don't encourage these habits, you are not teaching your child a good, communicate, uh, a good communicating skills. And at the end of the day, they will end up disobeying some of your instructions. Because it's very easy when the child is not giving eye contact, be it a little child, teenager, young adult, it is very easy to think I can just, I can wave it off. It's not very important. So we should cultivate this habit. Anytime communication occurs, whenever communication occurs, it is very important to look into each other's eyes, face to face. Don't just talk and your child is somewhere every time. Don't just pass uh, distance information every time. Joshua, can you just go and do that? I know sometimes it does happen, but don't let it be every time. Try, is it that you go to the child or you call the child to move closer to you? Then you call the child, get the response. See, we have this habit most of the time. You talk, you call the child, you give the instruction. For a child who is struggling to listen, it is not a good idea. Don't do it. Call the child. Get the child's response first. Yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. Then you pass the instruction, ensuring you're looking to each other's face, eyeball to eyeball. Having an eye contact is going to help your child to follow the instruction. It's going to make them to remember. It's going to make them to be conscious of what mommy said. I want to believe I'm communicating today. Thank you, bro. Thank you, boy. I want to believe I'm communicating. Please, if you have any question, as I continue, just go ahead and drop your question, contribution, and I'm just quickly going to answer the question and read out your contribution. Quickly on Instagram, Mama K, thank you for joining me. Marianic, thank you for joining me. Joy Band, thank you for joining me. God bless you. God bless you. So I'll just quickly go to the next point. If you are not clear enough, please let me know. If you want to, me to explain something about this, please just drop the comment and I will, I will attend to that. I said, I said it increases the chance of child remembering what you have said and focus on what on the words that you are talking about or what you are saying. When you give eye contact, when you look at the child, when you're talking or giving instruction, it increases the possibility, the chance of the child to remember what you said or for them to focus on the instruction. There is high possibility for the child to focus on the instruction and pay attention to the details that you're giving when they look at you, when you look at them in the process of communication. All right, I'll go to number two. I said, I said, use description, not reaction. When this happened, when you give an instruction to your child and your child did not listen, it is not a time for you 
to set loose. I know that I'm a parent also myself, and I know sometimes we know we, we set loose a little bit, we forget ourselves, and we put ourselves together. But sincerely speaking, it is not a time for us to raise our voice, to scream, or shout, or to, you know, reaction means an emotional reaction statement. Like you don't listen, you don't listen to me, you are very naughty. You, emo, that's a, those are emotional reaction statements, especially for self-willed uh, <laughs> self children. <laughs> This is not going to work. It makes them worse because they feel you are manipulating them. So use description. For example, you said, uh, don't go outside for now. The weather is not good. If you can just stay here and do this. And your child just, your child is up and just went outside. Instead of you just shouting, start by calling the child. I've been high contact. I said, uh, I said you should not go outside. You stood up, which I thought maybe you want to do what I asked you to do. Then you went outside. You shouldn't have gone outside. Describe what happened. Start from the one you thought it was going to be a good behavior. Because they were supposed to stand up and do what you asked them to do. You stood up. I was thinking you're going to do what I asked you to do. But no, you went outside. That shouldn't have happened. You might be thinking in your head, ah, how would the child learn something like that? You are not strong. You are not raising your voice. Yes, that is where we talk about boundaries and uh, uh, consequences. Even before we give consequences, we have to let the child understand it is not always the first thing to do. When, they, uh, when, they, uh, when the disobedience occur, talk about it, describe the situation. Describe what the child would have done in that situation. You are not supposed to do that. And if the child persists, then you describe what, we, what you will do in the next occurrence. Make sure it's not an empty threat. Make sure that you follow through. But ensure that they, you know you had a com in clear communication about it. Don't just jump. Don't just jump and sh uh, slap your child. Don't just raise your voice anyhow. Sometimes we also need to ensure that our mental health is okay. We have we can manage our anger. Anger management. Because with little things, sometimes we are already boiling. I I I think I have that point later in this and in the for today. The importance of you having a calm voice, a calm voice, a calm face, and a calm body. It's very important when you are dealing with your teenager. Don't be in power struggle with your teenager or any of your child. The child is talking to you, mommy, I'm not going to do it, and you are very upset. You will do it. You're already driving the child to the end of destruction. And that is what we call power struggle. It is uncalled for. Never be in power struggle with your child. Say the instruction one time and keep quiet. Even if the child is saying, you will do it. I will not do it. I will not. Instead of just shouting, I'm your mother. You will do it. The moment I tell people, the moment you have to remind your child that you are the mother is the beginning of failure. I'm your mother. I'm your mother. If you have to do this reminder every time, mommy, daddy, check yourself. I'm your father. Whatever I say, you have to do it. You're already in power struggle with your child. It's not going to work with children of this generation. Don't forget your calm face, calm voice, and calm body. Yet, you have to be strict and follow through. Imagine a child throwing tantrum, a teenager throwing tantrum. You have always been doing this to me. I'm not going to listen to you. My friends, just look at the child. Keep the, you, can still, even, you can still even give a smile. After the child is calm, follow through. Do as I said. Don't be, don't, don't batter words. Don't batter words. It's uncomfortable. Let me continue. I hope I'm making sense. Yes, Sister Toyin. Power struggle with a child means means to the child you have lost the control yes that's just it that's a simple meaning you have lost the control the moment you enter past struggle with your child you lost the control 
You are no more in control. And you have given them strength. You have given the reason why the child should do that again. You are reinforcing the bad habit of the child. You are telling the child, do it again. Do it again and again. You can do that again. That's the meaning. When you enter past, struggle with your child. I want to be sure we have enough time so that I can continue. Okay, 10 more minutes and we're going to be out of here. Some, I, said, I, said, yeah, I said, some children start to ignore or they start to look away because they don't want the correction to, be, to happen. Before you give instruction or because you have given instruction and they didn't listen, before you say a word about their bad habits, they're already looking away because they don't want the correction to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't want the correction to happen, so they start looking away. Then you have to teach them something. <laughs> if a child doesn't want correction to happen, there is another thing you have to teach the child. You have to teach them how to follow instruction. For a child who doesn't want that to happen, that means the child is actually willing to listen. Maybe the child doesn't know how to go about listening to instruction. Mommy is going to complain and mommy is going to talk. The child is already looking away because you know that I've done something bad. The child doesn't want to even hear it. Don't, don't say it. Mommy is going to say it. Just look away. What are you supposed to teach your child? How to follow instruction. Help the child. That's our job. That's our duty. They are raw materials. They are blank slates. Write what you want to see on it. Now, before it's too late. <laughs> the word early intervention that we use in the... Uh, <laughs> I think it's applicable to everywhere. You have to do now. Don't wait. Tomorrow might be too late. Even on your teenager, do it now. Don't wait. The moment you notice something is not going straight, do it now. Write it. If you have written something wrong before, take a, an eraser, rub it, and write what you want to see. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. All right. Then teach them how to follow instruction. Number one way to teach your child how to follow instruction is to look at the person. I've said that before. Look at the person. Keep your calm face, calm voice, and calm body. I've said that briefly already. If you are not keeping your calm face, calm voice, and calm body, you are not teaching your child to follow instruction. The child will not be able to follow instruction. I made a video before and I was talking about uh, a child who is not following through instructions, but the child will not listen to you or respond until you get to the 10th time. For example, you are saying, Paul, come here. The child is not listening. Paul, come here. The child is not until the tenth time before, the, before Paul will come to you. I asked him that, I said, what do you think happened? Because you have already registered in Paul's head that when mommy calls one time, two time, three time, she is not serious. She doesn't mean it. She is still joking. It's already registered. She is still joking. Now when you're on the tenth time, you now raise your voice. Paul, come here, I'm talking. Then the child will come. The child is psychologically aware that when mommy shouts, it is when she's serious. That's a big problem that you have to quickly fix. I said something. I said for those who don't know how to handle this, for those who don't understand child psychology, you have to bring the tenth thing to the first position. I said don't shout on your children, of course. It doesn't work it. Shouting does not mean the child is following through. For those that spank, no, I'm not saying don't spank your children, I'm not, that's not what I'm teaching today. I do if there is need, but I try not to. I try as much as possible to avoid it. The child that, you, uh, that follow instruction after spanking, don't deceive yourself. The child has, has only listened to the spanking, not respecting you. So we have to find a way. Okay, what if I cannot spank? What if I'm removing the spanking? How can I talk to my child and the child will still follow instruction? Yes, exclusive divine, yes. Keep your calm face, your calm body, and your calm voice. See, we can all do it. If Oya can do it, I, we can all do it. I know how I can be so upset. It takes intentionality to say, no, this is what I want to do now. No, this, this child will not press the button. It just stay calm. You talk to yourself. That's why our mental health must be in place for us to be a very amazing parents. Let me continue because of time. 
Say okay. You have to teach the child to say okay or to disagree appropriately. Listen to this, relax. When you give a child instruction, I want you to know as parent and caregiver that it is not a must for your child to say okay or yes to your instruction. I made a video before and I was saying if you want to raise a child that cannot say no, you are not raising a leader. There are ways to say no appropriately. If you want to raise a giant, a leader, <laughs> they have to be able to say no appropriately or ask to disagree appropriately. We just need to teach them on how to go about it. No, mom, mommy, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm talking about. Imagine, this has happened to me severally with my children. By the time they are going to raise their point in disagreeing to what I, I will say that I'm the one that was at fault. I didn't think well. I didn't think deep. So we should always learn to be calm while giving the instruction. We teach them to say okay if it is okay with them. If that instruction is not okay with your child, please don't teach your child in a robotic way that you just have to say okay. You are endangering your children to the trouble out there. If we let them get used to it, just saying okay to you, okay to you, when they are being molested, God forbid, when they are facing challenges and difficulties outside, they will not be able to say no because they can't even say no to their mom. When those naughty uncles and aunties are doing something that is not right to them, they don't know how to say no because you didn't teach them to say no. And in teaching your children to say no, it must start from you. It must start from you. Mommy, do you think this is okay? But I think if you look deep, this is not going to work. My children have done, we do that every time in our house. But by the time I listen to them very well, I will know that they are the one who is actually right. They, they thought deep. They went deeper than I was thinking in the instruction. Mommy, do you know if I, if I do it like this, just as we have said, I think this is not going to be nice. But in the next way, that's why we should teach them how to disagree appropriately. It's our duty not to be rude. Mommy, did you notice this? Uh, if I do this just like you said now, I think this is going to, or what do you think? They'll push it back to me. I think this is going to be a mess. What do you think? Oh, 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 that's true. They've disagreed appropriately. And it's our duty as parents to teach our children this skill is a skill. But sometimes we are so full of ourselves that when we give instruction to our children, we just want to hear yes. And if something happens outside and your teenager is not coming to you and telling you about one boyfriend who is just touching anywhere outside or one naughty teacher in school, they can't come to you because they will just say yes. That's what you have raised. Let's wake up. Mommies, let's wake up. It's not going to work. Teach them to say no. Disagree up. Don't get it wrong. Because this statement, I've seen people that have, they've gotten it twisted. They are raising rude children. In the name of, no, my child must say no. No, I'm not saying raise ch rude children. No, stop it. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't get it twisted. A child who is always shouting and saying, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not what I'm talking about. Let them be reasonable and explain to you why they feel what you have said is not going to work. And that is when, when danger is about to happen outside, they will say no to that danger first, then they will come to you and speak to you because you have built a very nice relationship with your child. My big sister is here today. Good to see you. <laughs> Madam Charity Alogu, she said encourage suggestions. Yes. Encourage suggest let them suggest we have said this over and again in any of our videos even when you are making rules sit them down don't say a child is too young no hear their opinion out what do you think about it and do you know you are also encouraging their critical thinking i've said that almost every time let them suggest encourage it listen to them listen don't always just say come here do that. Sometimes we can all be guilty, but the moment we are intentional about this, and that is why we are reminding ourselves, then it's easier to get the result. Let me continue because of time. After they say okay or ask, uh, 
they ask uh, appropriately to disagree, then they do the task immediately. That is, if, it is, if you now conclude on what to do, teach them to do the task immediately, then check back. They need to check back, call you to check back. You'll be on the same page. One of the things I said, I, I brought out in when we had uh, Mommy Tolu two weeks ago, was when doctor was talking, Dr. Tinu, she said, at the moment that she said she was not going to go for medical again, she was not going to read medicine, the mom said, do you think this is going to make you happy in the future? She said, but mommy did not force me. It's not, it's not related directly, but we can take some things out of it. When a child is disagreeing appropriately, and you see reasons with the child, and you both agree and conclude on what to do, it is very easy for the child to do the task immediately. And you check back, and the child is going to check back. Yes, exclusively divine uh, on Instagram says, encourage objection and hear their opinion, listen to them. It's very good to be good listeners. If you want your child to listen to you, we say this every time, you have to listen to your child. You can't just be, you, just, you can't just be, you want to give the instruction, instruction. No, you have to listen to the child. It is very important. We will not fail on our children in Jesus' name. Time is up. I'm so surprised that it's already 31 minutes. Make sure that you follow through everything we have said. If there's something that you should not forget today, don't forget your calm voice. See, for me, I'm this person that has a very strong voice. My voice is naturally strong for those who are very close to me and have known me for years. When I became a mom, I realized that this is not going to work. Even when I make some of my videos, I know today I'm a little bit loud, but if you see some of my past videos and compare years back, you will see that I now talk calm because we took it up as a cause. Thank, thank God for my husband. You will tell me, no, take that again. You were too strong. You can do it. That's, you were too strong. It was on my neck. At first it was like, oh, let me be me and you be you. But I realized that every time that we say, let me be me and you be you, in parenting is going to affect our children. There's some things that we try to grow and learn for our children to be a better version of us. It means we are not selfish parents. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. Pastor David, I cite you there, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me, sir. I appreciate you. Sister Inez, I cite you on Instagram. Thank you for joining me all the way from Canada. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right, we're going to be rounding up now. If there's something that you should not forget, is teach your children the skill of listening. It's a skill. Communication, it's a skill, and it's, we need to teach it. And one of the ways in teaching our children, we should always remember our calm voice, calm face, calm body. Don't forget I said in early days of my video, I said my, our children are our mirror. What you want to see in the life of your children, mirror it. And if you see that this child you have tried, but yet the child will not listen to instruction. The child is so strong, not ready to listen to instruction, then set consequences. After setting these consequences with this child, have a discussion about it. If you do this again, this is what is going to happen. And ensure you follow through. See, the moment you set a, a, set, a, you set a consequence and you don't follow through, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. Your word has become garbage. By yourself, you pick your word and you trash it in the bin. Our words, when talking to our children, especially the sensitive ones which are teenagers, must be gold. Carry them with power. Our words must be gold. Say it and do it. Follow through. Don't say next time if you do, after you have said that, another next time if you... Another next time, that's already a garbage word. Garbage word. Make sure your words are good. When you say it and your child is not ready to listen over and again, go through with your consequences. And once again, I'll just quickly drop this. 
Sometimes the consequences that we use are not supposed to be punishment or are not supposed to be discipline. Listen, for example, your child who is going to ballet, your child is going to football, your child who is going to karate, gymnastics, what is it? Whatever your child is doing, music class. Those activities should never be discipline or punishment for your child. Punishment. Because you didn't listen, you will not go to your ballet next week. This is a wrong approach. Because your child is not listening, should not be left out in another lesson. It's not just fun time. They are learning. So when you are choosing your punishment, ensure that you are choosing them wisely. For example, a child on the spectrum who you want to train and the child is going for therapy, for example, play therapy. Play therapy is not just a play time. And you are saying to the child, because you didn't listen, you, will, you miss your session next week. This is a wrong way of punishment. This is just a bonus point. I, didn't put, I, didn't, I don't have the mind of saying this today. But we should be careful when we are putting up our consequences. Let it be what is not affecting the child. It's not part of the learning process of that child. I pray we will not fail on our children. Miss Remy, I cite you there. Uh, Mrs. Shomadi, I cite you there. Thank you for joining everyone. And I think we should call it a day today. It's already 36 minutes. We should call it a day today. <clears throat> I said, do this five step then, con correct, uh, correction, interaction will go away. If you teach them this step that I've said, there won't be need for correction. There won't be need for, because they will learn and follow through. There won't be need for correction. Describe this. Don't forget to always describe the situation. And in that, your description, ensure you mention what they did right. Even though you are going to what they have done wrong, but in your description, there must be something that looks good. So ensure you put that in your description and end up with what the child has done wrong and say, you shouldn't have, do you shouldn't have done that. If you do that next time, this is what is going to happen. But don't let me first time. I've seen growing up, I know somebody who will always kick the, the child. A mother kicked the child on the chest in my presence before, and the child fainted when I was much younger. Why did you do that? The child fainted. So we have to really, really train ourselves also. I said something last week when I was talking about your child, your confident. How can you make your teenager, how can you be your teenager's confident? Is, is uh, we learning to grow with them. They are growing, don't forget. So we also need to grow. They are not that two years that we run around, come and change your diaper, sit there, okay, mommy. They, they are also growing, they want to explore. They are growing physically, emotionally, Mentally, psychologically, and physically, everything is going. They, see, they are seeing mirror. You were there, mommy. Daddy, you were there. Accept. Admit. Oh, I'm also growing. You look at yourself. Ah, ah. So they are also at that stage at this moment. So we need to grow along with them and meet them at the level that they will understand. Ms. Remy said blackmailing is not good. To punish the, ch uh, to punish the children, yes. Let them know the reason, reason what exactly, yes. Let them know the reason why you want to punish. If, in, if indeed you have to use punishment, they have to know. They have to understand. So by the time, I actually use punishment, but if I have to use, I ensure that by the time my children are going to leave what is their punishment, they will come back to me and be so sorry because they understand. We didn't do it. That was bad. That was bad. Not forcing them, but you make them see reasons. So that would prevent future occurrence. Somebody said on Instagram, said, uh, grow with your teenager, yes. Psychologically and meet them, yes. Just exactly. That's the way. That's the way. All right. I think I should call it a day for today. I think I should call it a day for today. I said something here. I said, be patient. Change takes time especially when you have not been raising them like that before and they are now teenager see sometimes you don't know those things we are not blaming anybody 
Sometimes it takes some people after a while to be intentional in their parenting. And for some, they started very early from day one of the child. For some, their intentionality started when the child is already 10 years. So the child that you have been intentional about at one year or day, one day, and the child that you start, you, you start being intentional about when the child is 12 years, you can't expect them to listen to the instruction the same way. You have to be patient with the child. It takes love. It takes care. It takes a lot of motivation, affection from you. So we should bear in mind that change takes time. Be patient. Be patient. As I call it a day today, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining me today on Instagram, Blossom Entertainment, Exclusive, Divine, Mudukwe Oluwa, Mudukwe Ola. Ah, Sister Dupe, good to see you. Long, long time, Sister Dupe. Good to see you. Wow, good to see you on Instagram today. And who else do we have on Instagram today? I just want to say thank you to everybody. I think I lost the names. So thank you, everybody. God bless you. I appreciate you. Uh, Miss J1618, thank you for joining. Uh, Sister Inese, again, thank you for joining. Uh, uh, Cakes by... Ah, my sister, thank you for joining me today. God bless you. Giddy Fair, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate Impact, you are on Instagram today. Thank you for joining me. OJ1, God's own, thank you for joining me. No salary, 11, 29. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll just stop right there. Facebook, thank you for joining me, everyone. Any question, any question before I call it a day? Any question, contribution, I will just be here 30 seconds. Question on how you can help your children, your teenager especially, to follow instruction. Or how can you identify, started with how you can identify those one who doesn't want to listen. So if you are just joining us, I will just employ you, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, just go ahead and watch the video from the beginning. From the beginning, that is where you're going to see how to identify that my child is not ready to listen or my child is not listening. And after that, I went on to what you can do to help the child to listen. And I said something very important that we all need to know that communication is a skill that we need to teach our children as parents. One more important thing that I said today is don't always forget your calm voice, calm body, and calm face. Always go through with your consequences. Ensure your words are gold and not garbage. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Sister Tony, I said you there. Thank you. Past struggle with our children means... Okay, I said that before. Thank you so much, Sister Tony. Pastor Shola, thank you for joining me today on Insta or Facebook. My brother, Golden Son, thank you for joining me today. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Diki Nomo, thank you for joining me, sir. My big sister is here today. She, uh, Madam Alogu, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your contribution. Bishop, Bishop David, thank you for joining me again, sir. God bless you. Uh, who else is there? Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Don't forget that parenting must be intentional. Miss Remy, Mrs. Shomade, thank you for joining me. Parenting must be intentional. It must be full of purpose. It must be full of vision. And this vision must be carried jealously. Intentionality is key. Our children are blank slate. They are raw material, just the way you came naked from heaven. The Lord has given us our growing glory. It's our duty as parent and caregiver is to write whatsoever we want to see in their life on the plain slate. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What's that? I have a question. On Instagram? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm told there is a question on Instagram. How can we contact you off Instagram? Okay. You can just send, send, uh, send me a DM. If it's on Facebook, you can messenger us or something. And there's a number on our, on our Facebook. I think it's on Instagram also. There is a number that you can reach me directly also. Or even if not directly, there is a number that you can reach out to. Or you can send a message. We will definitely uh, get back to you through the number or DM or messenger. Or you send a mail to our email at thevisionguide at gmail.com. 
all these things are available to you and by the grace of god we do everything we can to support you in your parenting because we have to be intentional thank you everybody once again god bless you don't forget if you see my face for the very first time this little girl is called oye liar oye for short and hi, I'm your parenting coach. I'll see you same time, same place, next week, Saturday, 6 p.m. GMT plus 3, 4 p.m. what? 4 p.m. UK time. And stay blessed. Bye for now. Be intentional.